welcome back to another session in dentistry and more today we'll be seeing a small topic from oral and maxillofacial surgery that is tori maxillary and mandibular tori which will be dealt under pre prosthetic surgery there are lots of thing which comes under pre prosthetic surgery but this session is about tori so prosthetics is a replacement of missing teeth lost or congenitally absent so once the process is received the patient can perform many functions such as mastication uh, chewing uh, the facial expression but some patients may not be able to receive a process because of few problems such as bone atrophy soft tissue atrophy or soft or hard tissue problems which is localized so we need to perform pre prosthetic surgery for such patients to receive a prosthesis so there are many bony procedures uh, such as uh, the alveoloplasty alveolectomy uh, reduction of mylohydrate reduction of genial tubercles or uh, elimination of unfavorable undercuts and the tori it can be a maxillary tori or a mandibular tori so maxillary tori or palatal tori are usually present on the midline of the heart palate so most palatal tori are less than 2 cm in diameter but the size can change throughout the life so when do we need to remove a maxillary tori that is the indication of removal of maxillary tori not all the time we should remove maxillary tori to receive a complete denture or maxillary complete denture but the indications are an extremely large torus extremely large which actually fills the palatal vault or a torus that extends beyond the post dam area the posterior part where the actual retention features lies then if there is a traumatized mucosa over the torus or if there is deep bony undercuts if there is deep bony undercuts which interferes with the denture insertion and stability or if the tori uh, interferes with the function such as speech or deglutination so we can uh leave behind the small tori which can be relieved during the denture construction but we need to remove the large tori because of this indication so how do we perform the maxillary tori removal so procedure in this the midline incision is given you can see the picture here the midline incision is given uh in the palate and flap is reflected with a y shaped releasing incision you can see the releasing incision like this then the torus is removed by making multiple cuts of it and then the flap is sutured a palatal splint is given to prevent hematoma formation so the procedure is uh, not very complicated we are using a y shaped releasing incision with a palatal uh, midline palatal uh, incision then torus is removed by making multiple cuts then the flap is sutured then there should be a palatal splint to prevent the hematoma so in case of mandibular torus so this uh, mandibular tori is an exostosis exostosis is nothing but a bony growth this is found on the lingual surface of the mandible which is opposite to the canines and premolars okay canines and premolars so it will be just opposite to these teeth in the mandible they too also have problems with denture retention in the mandible because of the loss of marginal seal in the premolar region there the actual retention occurs other than uh, the retromolar area so this exostosis create a problem with the retention of the mandibular denture so uh, it is indicated again almost same as a maxillary tori tori causing the lingual undercuts and which interferes with the lingual flange extension 
when the mucosa overlying is ulcerated or the large tori interfering with speech and uh, deglutition so the procedure uh, bilateral lingual and inferior alveolar anesthesia is given uh, incision extending from 1 to 1.5 cm beyond each tori then always leave behind a band of tissue attached to the midline between the anterior extent of the two incision so when the torus has a small pedunculated base a mallet and an osteotomy is used to cleave the tori from the medial aspect of the mandible so the direction of initial burr is parallel to the medial aspect of mandible to prevent the fracture of lingual or inferior cortex then we can use a bone file to smoothen the lingual cortex uh we can use palpation method to check for proper contour and presence of any uh, undercuts then we can uh, go for a continuous suture then go spacks are placed and retained for the next toll hours so that was about uh, the maxillary and mandibular tori its indication and little bit about its procedure so it's very commonly asked short note the maxillary tori and mandibular tori so i'll come up with a similar topic in oral and maxillofacial surgery thank you